Today, on Energy Contact, have you ever jumped off of something very high? When you land, it's not your feet that hurt, it's your low back and your hips, sometimes even your neck and your shoulders. Energy falls up. So do pain and pleasure. So do attraction and repulsion. So we're about to see what all that has to do with how you think, how you look, how you act, and how you feel. We're going to see what's up with you. And that's what's coming up right now on Energy Contact. Hello and welcome to Energy Contact. My name is Joseph Willenbrink. Thank you for joining me today and thank you to the production staff here in the studio for helping me get my message out to you. Energy Contact is a series I'm presenting to you as a public service. It's about attaining perfect health, growth, self-improvement, happiness, and realizing your full potential. It's designed to present you a new way of looking at yourself and a new way of looking at the world around you. We're talking about things that have to do with making an energetic contact energetic contact with yourself internally and with your environment. There's no difference between the body, the mind, the spirit, the emotion, the intellect, the ego. There's no difference between mass and energy. It's all the same. We love to categorize and classify, pull these things apart, isolate, separate, look at one little chunk under a microscope. But in fact, all that health and healing that we're talking about, they take place when we do just the opposite. They take place when we smoosh this stuff together. When we make an energetic contact between the physical world and the unseen one. We're presenting on these programs a brand new paradigm. A brand new paradigm that's thousands of years old. We're presenting extraordinary topics for ordinary people. Let's move right ahead with that. Let's bring up a slide. Everyone please know that I am not a doctor. I don't want to be a doctor. This show is not a medical advice show. It's not a medical anything show. Now, I might call myself an energy healer, a chakra healer. Might call myself lots of things. So might you if you came to me. But state, federal, and local governments call me no such things at all. It's important to know that. There's a lot of important information on your screen right now. Please read it with your full attention, if you will. And when you've got it down, now would be a great time to locate a pencil and paper. Now, here's why you want to do that. At the end of this program, we're going to run some credits, and on those credits, there's going to be contact information for me. I invite and encourage you to contact me. I sort of hope that something that I have to say to you today might inspire you to want to. But in order to contact me, you're going to need the contact information. And in order to get that, you're going to need a pencil and paper. So if you get it now, there will be plenty of time at the end of the show to jot it down. Otherwise, there might not be. So go locate that if you will. All right, everybody got that? Let's come back up here. Today's show is show number 51. Now, if you're joining me for the first time today, well, thanks. Thanks and welcome. There is some up-to-speed things, some ramp-up things that you will have missed out on. These shows are sequential. They build. But I'm doing my very best to make each show have a lot of value on a standalone basis, and I believe today's show does. If it is your first time, and if what you see piques your interest, then I will invite you and encourage you to look for earlier shows airing at later times. They'll either be re-airing right here, or they'll be on at different days, different times, in different areas. And if you look for them, I'll appreciate it. I'll appreciate you watching. All right. Now's the time of the show where we get my co-host on camera. I'm going to introduce Slim to you. Let's get him. There's my buddy, Slim. This is my friend, Slim. And Slim is here for a reason. Since we're investigating what energy contacts in the physical self, we have to know a couple of things, don't we? We have to know something about energy. And this program is a program all about energy. We're going to learn plenty about it. But all that energy out there in space, floating freely, it has no value to us whatsoever. It has no value until it comes into contact with something. Slim is here to help us understand that thing that the energy contacts. Remember, a body without energy 
is just a corpse. Energy without a body, well, it might be a number of cool things, but none of them are human. All right. Today's show, as I mentioned, is show number 51. Today is an auspicious day. I told you on the last show, show 50, that it was an auspicious day. Today's auspicious for a different reason. Our last program was a, was a culmination of the, of the first 50 shows of Energy Contact. Kind of a, a coming together, a conclusion of sorts, even though the program subject matter is continuous. Well, today is the beginning of our next 50, or maybe our next 150, who knows? But I like beginnings. For the first 50 programs, we were discussing anatomy from an energetic perspective. We looked at discoveries of modern science from the viewpoint, from the perspective of ancient wisdom. Well, now we're starting to turn that around just a little bit. We're beginning to look at the ancient wisdom from the perspective and in the light of the discoveries of modern science. When we were in school, when we were kids, we were taught that our bodies were these individual hunks of isolated, separated mass. They were separate from each other, certainly, but they were also separated from our own mind, from our own spirit, from our own emotion. But on energy contact, we've experienced ourselves differently than that, in a new way, and I dare say a more accurate way. We've seen that we are just a collection of forces, internal forces acted upon by external ones. So whatever it is that makes us feel good or bad, that makes us happy or sad, makes us pretty or ugly, whatever, it's just a function of unseen energy flows. And anything that flows has a current, like electricity does, like a river does. Until we make our pain go away, we can't think of anything else, though. Pain is just resistance to flow, and when that pain visits us, it dominates us. Pain and pleasure are two sides of the same coin we're learning, however. They travel through the exact same channels, the exact same pipeline. So we can't sign up for pleasure without signing on to pain. They come together. So all these forces causing that, we've seen that they're invisible, but they manifest themselves in very visible, very physical ways, don't they? They metabolize into the physical us, this stuff here, our bodies. That's how Einstein saw us. He didn't see us as blocks of ice, those isolated chunks. He just saw us as congealed, sort of half-frozen steam. Now, Einstein, theoretically, was not a mystic. But we've also seen that yesterday's mysticism is today's elementary science. And therefore, today's mysticism will be tomorrow's elementary science. What we are is wavelengths, frequencies, pulses, rhythms, vibrations, things like that. That's all. It's all the same. The, visible, the physical hunks, they're just projections. They're illusions. So, what's invisible or visible has nothing at all in common, nothing at all to do with what's real and what's unreal. Those are two different, unrelated pairs of concepts, the invisible and the invisible versus the real and the unreal. We've seen also that invisible body intellect. The body intellect, how the same materials in our brains that give us thought, reason, recall, logic, memory, all those things that we have always thought of as brain things, how they are in fact in every cell of our body, permeating every cell of our body. And so we build everything into them, don't we? The pains and the pleasures, the resistances to flow, the promotions as a flow. We build that all into the body intellect, and then that body intellect flips right around and builds us. We've spoken a little bit about another invisible force, too, a mysterious energy that those old Indian mystics called kundalini energy. We haven't talked much about it other than hinted that we're going to over the first 50 episodes of Energy Contact, but we're getting to the place where we're finally going to get to it in a lot of detail. So, as we proceed across the next number of episodes, we're going to start getting a little bit more out on the edge, out into the lands of chakras and auras and the mystical, things like that. But I'll always be able to tell you that before we did, I spent 50 episodes studying Western science, physical anatomy, Einstein, Newton, tangible things like that. But even though we're moving on, don't get the idea that we're leaving the science. We're, we're the science. It's far from done. 
you'll see that the mystical is a lot more tangible and a lot more scientific than you ever thought it was. Today, we're starting our investigation of the channels, the pipelines that pleasure and pain flow through. We've seen the anatomy of it, and today we're going to see some more anatomy, plenty more. We'll keep seeing anatomy as we go along. But if mass and energy are the same, then there must be other pipes and channels, energetic ones, other things that we can't see with our physical eyes, things that in fact aren't physically definable at all, but that are every bit as real, if not more so. So we looked at all of those things that we can see, and we concluded that they are all built up out of all the things that we can't see. In fact, we are going to see that the physical part of us, this stuff, this is the more unreal part. Einstein knew that. It's a hologram of sorts, of the invisible energetic world. It's an optical illusion. It's the energetic world of wavelengths, of flows and frequencies. That's all. That's all that's real. The frozen steam that Einstein explained so clearly, yet most people, including people who study Einstein, including people who teach Einstein, somehow choose to ignore. So today is a very busy day for us then. Today we're just throwing a bunch of information at you. It'll all seem to be disjointed first. We'll, we're going to assemble it all later. Not much today, more so over the next few shows. We'll tie it all together. So if you haven't been watching Energy Contact for a while, today is a good day to dive back in because we're starting into new areas. We're about to be relating that pipeline, that invisible pipeline, to physical structure, to pleasure and pain, to attractions and repulsions. And we're setting the stage to discover, to discover more about the pipelines in us and the stuff that goes through them and the crimps and the nodes that stop the stuff from going through them. So that's what we're talking about today. This sounds like a lofty goal. It's an introduction to the invisible pipelines that conduct energy flows and create everything from form to spirit and that are created by everything from form to spirit. Now a million different people will respond to energy flows in a million different ways. What's good for one person is bad for another. We've seen that on energy contact. But still, there are some absolutes. Some things that are good are bad for us all. All right. So we're going at blinding speed today. But now, let's everybody stop for a second. Take a big, deep breath. Close your eyes for a second if you're in a place where you can do that. Because we have reached the part of our show where we get to take our virtual field trip, our journey in our mind's eye, like we do about this part of every show. And today, we get to visualize that you and I are in the woods in India. We're on a retreat of sorts, meditating and learning from great souls, very spiritual beings, swamis, gurus, yogis, mystics. And they're educating us, talking hours on end about the value of meditation and introspection, about the meaningless of the physical world, about the meaninglessness of the physical body. We're just in awe of their wisdom. And then they get up and they start doing yoga exercises. Very extreme, very athletic things. And we look and we realize, man, these guys are in great shape. But you say, hey, wait a minute, excuse me, but if the body is so meaningless, why are you spending so much time and so much energy keeping yourself in such good condition? One yogi looks around at you for a second and he says, hey, how can you meditate if your back hurts? Hold that thought. All right, after 50 programs, I have a special treat for you today. I guess it's high time that I told you guys the meaning of life, the purpose of it all, the reason for your existence in this world. And you're thinking, whoa, Joseph, that's what everybody wants to know. That's what people have wanted to know for centuries. That's a big question. Why haven't you answered that question before now? <laughs> it's simple. You didn't ask. You still didn't, but today I'm going to tell you anyway. According to those old yogis, and we've seen that they're pretty smart dudes, the purpose of life, the, meaningless, the meaning of it all, is to realize your true self, to realize what you've always been all along. That's it. We're done. We can all, we can all go home now. 
but you're thinking, hey, wait a minute. What do you mean by that? Thanks a lot, smart guy. What does, what do those words, true self, what you've always been all along, that doesn't mean anything to me. Well, what's worse than that is I'm not going to tell you what you've always been all along. You're going to have to figure that out all by yourself. But I will tell you how to do that. You ready? Here goes. In order to discover the real, first you have to weed out the unreal. In order to do that, you got to turn down the noise, turn down the chatter, all the worldly distractions. You got to get rid of them somehow. In order to turn down the noise, you have to empty the mind completely. Calm and tame that wild stallion that it is that over hyperactive mind of yours. But the mind doesn't want to empty. It's very, it's almost impossible to empty it completely. It takes years and years of training. It seems to like the chatter. But there is a next best thing. If we can't get the mind down to zero thoughts, we can get it down reasonably easy to one thought. And now you know why the yogis meditate. And you know what the mantra is for. It's to cook that mind down to one thought, to get rid of the phone calls and the to-do list and the grocery list and the so on and so forth and get on one thought. Now the mind tends to take the shape and form of whatever it is that it focuses upon. And so for that reason, if you're going to cook the mind down to one thought, you may as well make it a good one. And now you know why yogi's mantras tend to be divine thoughts of some sort. All right, so getting back to my story. We just want to be still, to be quiet, to meditate, to focus. But in order to do that, our body has to be free from pain, has to be healthy. Otherwise, we're not going to focus on anything but that. How can we focus our mind on transcendental thoughts when we've got an aching back? And now you know why yogis who preach the meaninglessness of the physical body spend so much time working on it, spend so much time doing yoga. That's not why the people in your neighborhood are doing yoga, by the way, but that's what it was designed for. And now you know not only the meaning of life, but you know how to get there. And that will pervade most of the next episodes of Energy Contact. Remember now, when I'm talking to you about those old yogis, that the term yogi does not refer to somebody that's going to those trendy yoga classes. Yogis are the old mystics. That's the term that describes the old mystic. The exercises are just a small component of what they do. In fact, those yoga exercises are all about making space, making, making unification. Whereas most exercise that most of us do in the modern world are all about compressing and, and pushing things together, which is the opposite of where we want to go. Yoga is the opposite of separation and compression. Separation and compression we saw are two of the main sources of pain that we, we've talked about a lot on energy contact. So now you know that a whole lot of so-called yoga classes are not teaching yoga at all. All right, now that we've got all that meaning of life business out of the way, we're going to do some other things. We're going we're to put a bookmark in that and come back to our bodies for a minute. We're going to come back and look at Slim. We want to come back to our understanding of bones, particularly our main horizontal and our main vertical structures. Why? Because we'll see that they are holograms of the energy sources and of the energy pipelines we're going to spend so much time talking about. All right, let's come right in on Slim. What you'll notice here in Slim is that he's got things holding him together. We were taught incorrectly about our skeletons. We were always taught that our bones are our framework, that they give us strength and support, that they are the things that hold us together. They are, they are a frame onto which everything else is sort of hung and strung like the ornaments are hung and strung on a Christmas tree or like or like the frames of, of high-rise building. That's what our skeletons, that's how they were prevented, presented to us. Let's get close on Slim. And I want to show you something. What you see here are bolts and screws. Where are they in your body? Slim's got tons of them. He's got connectors and wires all over himself. You don't have those in your skeleton. You want to see what Slim would look like without them? Well, let's bring up a slide. 
we're gonna see another view of Slim. Actually, Slim would look even worse than that because these bones were laid out in order. The law of entropy says they'd just be in a random pile. Now you and I do not have bolts and screws, but if something wasn't holding our bones together, we'd look like that too. It's an important point. There is nothing on or nothing in your bones that hold your skeleton together. All right, so let's come back up here. So, our bones don't hold us together. We hold them together. The bones don't support the body. The body supports the bones. That's why Slim needs bolts and screws, and you don't. We've had it upside down and backwards for years and years, and so have our anatomy, so has our anatomy teachers. Bones do not support us, but they do provide us form. We're going to bring Slim a little closer into me here because we're going to look at him a little more in a second. Bones provide that form by providing space. Otherwise, we'd just be jellyfish, we'd be rubber bands. What bones do is keep my hand from being stuck to my shoulder. They provide a push, an outward flow. They provide a fulcrum across which muscles can pull. All right, so we want to see Slim to see our main vertical and our main horizontal structures. Slim here is about five foot seven, but he's only a foot around, so he's basically a vertical structure. So are you and I. But we do have horizontal structures. It's important to know that. In fact, the horizontal structures become more important then, huh? Because they're supporting more vertical weight. Our basic vertical structures are our legs and then our spine. And our spine includes our neck. It's important to remember that the neck is a part of the spine. Our basic horizontal structures are our feet and then our pelvis. That's the big deal there. And the shoulders up above. But the really big deal, the main structures of the main structures, are our pelvis and our spine. We started off the show today talking about how energy falls up, how it moves up from our hips. If it does, then our pelvis must be the model of a source of something. It's got to be the core of something. And our spine, therefore, has to be a pipeline of something. It has to be something through which something, I'm using the word something a lot, we'll define what that something is as we go along, it's through a pipeline through which something can flow through. Since we've been looking at pain and pleasure over the last few shows, we're going to look at this in the context of low back pain here in a second. But really, as we look at that, we want to understand that it's not so much our purpose to understand the pain today. It's our purpose to understand energy flows and pipelines. So we're going to get slim from the back here. All right, most of our back pains come from down here a little bit. They come from the interface between our pelvis and our spine, this lumbar area and this. This is our sacrum and this is our pelvis. So this is the sacroiliac joint. Most of our back pain comes from there. When our thoughts create chaos in that area, it imprints into the body intellect and it misshapes us. By the way, coming in at second place is our shoulders and our neck. That's the the second most important horizontal vertical, vertical interface. Well, here's what we know about external forces that act upon us. We've seen that there are basically three of them. There is energy that falls up, gravity that falls down, and entropy that falls apart. Well, since energy falls up, that resistance to flow begins in that sacrum area and it moves upwards. Okay, I think we're about done with Slim. I always feel like he's shunning me when he's facing away. Okay, so those old yogis, they just knew better than to let that happen. And so, they exercise their physical bodies. They know that back pain re resists flow. It impedes the upward flow of something. Something that needs to get up that channel in the spine. It's why they did yoga. How can you meditate if your back hurts? Whew. All right, let's stop and recap for a second. We're relating structure to energy channels and energy pipelines. And we're relating that to pleasure and pain. And we're about to relate all that to attractions and repulsions. Whether or not you retract or repel pain is a function of how you line up the energy current. That's all. Einstein also taught us that mass and energy can't be created or destroyed. So it's all the same. 
Last show, in fact, we looked at magnets. Get out my magnets just for a second. Magnets are a force. And you can see that the same force that attracts also, pardon me if a magnet falls across the floor, also repels. It's the same force. Magnets teach us that. Well, there's all sorts of waves like those magnetic waves that move through us. Those magnetic waves, they're moving through me now. That's not all. There's radio waves, there's electromagnetic waves, cell phone signals, there's Wi-Fi, lands and wands, your, your, your wireless modem things. All of that stuff is moving through you right now. All of the forces, are they're attracting and repelling things right now, just like those magnets are. Your health, your happiness, your spiritual growth, they have a flow too. And so the body, mind, spirit, emotion, intellect, ego, well, they're all the same. And if you resist those flows through your physical channel, it will be very hard for you to be a spiritual person. Oh my goodness, I've just said something profound, so I'm going to repeat it. If you resist the flows through your physical channels, it will be very difficult for you to be a spiritual person. Those old yogis that we talk about were familiar with that. And they were familiar with their attractions and repulsions. They were familiar with them thousand years ago. They called them Raga Dveshas. And they didn't like them. They saw them as a setup. It's only the attraction to wealth that makes you susceptible to the pain of poverty. It's the attachment to a full stomach that makes you hurt when you're hungry. It's the need for companionship or romance or acceptance that makes you feel the agony of separation and loneliness and agony and isolation. On a cold, rainy, or snowy winter's day, is it the water and the temperature that make you depressed? No, it's not. It's the attachment to something. The attachment of what it's like to be warm or comfortable or dry, or it's your appearance or the attachment to not having to sit in traffic. Whatever it is, on it goes, you get the idea. And so now you know why most people are motivated not by the joy of what they get, but by the experience, by the fear of what they might lose. It's an addiction. This awareness is locked up inside you, and that's what we are going to discuss a whole lot more over the next episodes of Energy Contact. Until then, I wish you peace and positive energy and a healthy life in Energy Contact. I've been keeping it now, keep my mind.